I left, uh, first time I went over, I, I left out of uh, Travis Air Force Base up in, in uh, uh, San Francisco. Mm -hmm. That's the first time I went over. And then the next time I came back, the second time I went over, I, we shipped out of El Toro. Uh -huh. So this is a, a checkpoint, a checkpoint along a major highway that the French built back in the 50s, right? And there's these kind of ruins all over Vietnam. I mean, they're, they're everywhere, right? Here, here, standing up on top of the bunker, and you can see the circular area where they actually had uh, some artillery. You can see the old parapet walls mm -hmm. and where the, you know, the French were kind of the castle mentality. Mm -hmm. Common mode in uh, motor transportation for most of the country was a little teeny motorbike. Here, here's uh, two very attractive girls riding <laughs> a motorbike down the road, and we're, we're in a truck going by, and I'm thinking, oh. That would be considered a taxi, little three wheels, mm -hmm. wheel scooters. But they would load those right to the hill. In, in what kind of tank is that? That's an M60. M60. Oh, no, excuse me. That that actually is a is a South Vietnamese Army tank. So that may have been a remnant of, of World War II that, that we had given them years back. Uh -huh. Could even be in a French tank as far as I'm going, but it wasn't one of ours. There's a. Railroad track, people coming out, waiting for transportation, and those little, little tiny, that's their buses, you know, but that, that's kind of what the, the folks in the cities look like. That, that okay, was here not, we are in a convoy. Okay. What, was there such a thing as improvised explosive devices no, then? Not, not, well, they were landmines occasionally. That's one of our tanks. That is an M60 tank right there. And you can see it, it eats up most of the roadway. That is a headquarters to the South Vietnamese Army uh, Battalion for that area in the, in, in the name. What kind of camera were these early pictures taken? Uh, uh, Argus or something? It probably a little, uh, you know, little teeny oh, yeah. one. Argus. Yeah. 35 it was all manual, no light meter. All of these I guessed at the light. Yeah. You know, I just, you know, set the Just stuff follow the directions. In, in shot, yeah. Shoot it at 125. You know, it, what, what, what's kind of funny, Fred, that it was interesting is that when a convoy would drive down the road, you, you felt like uh, almost like a Roman emperor because all the kids would run out and they'd cheer and they'd jump up and down in hopes that you might throw them some candy or something. But you got a reception wherever you went. I mean, that, that, that happens mile after mile after mile. All the kids come racing out of the village, you know, and they're yelling and screaming and, and, and so forth. That's always a good sign, by the way, mm -hmm. because if you didn't see kids, usually meant that the village knew that the NVA were in the area. Uh -huh. But if the kids are out playing around, running around, having a good old time, there, there really wasn't any worry. Uh, this is a Vietnamese car wash. <laughs> you, you could drive your Jeep down to the mud hole mm -hmm. and get two guys, and they would have like a sponge in a bucket. And they, they would wash all, they, you know, for the equivalent of like 50 cents, they would scrub and polish your Jeep. <laughs> here's, a, here's a farmer scooping up water in, into an aqueduct mm -hmm. to, to flood his crop, but you can see no pumps, no electricity, no nothing. All this kind of has a little shuttle, uh -huh. shuttles the water up, a little A-frame there, right. you know. So, and, and there's a water buffalo. That's his tractor. All these are taken from on uh, top of your vehicle. Yep, uh, as right. we drive right along. Yeah. This is uh, through going through the town in in uh, in Penang. Little three wheel bicycle thing. Another kind of taxi. You know, the guy would pedal and push around. I don't know what they would charge. But th this is the typical town scene that you would see. Uh, people carrying stuff down the road. That's basically what the roads consisted of going from village to village. Because mm -hmm. they really didn't need much help. They'd walk their water buffalo, they'd walk along, they don't have cars. Now that's, that's, that's about as wide as the trail would be village to village. They're after the wheat har they're harvesting the, the, the rice, I should say, not wheat. <clears throat> Here's one of the, the markets. And they, they would have a daily market. People just bring their stuff and they'd set it down there and and the people come in and buy whatever they want. So 
they'd be empty at night, and come back the next day, they'd be full of everything, people all, but, you know, like a farmer's market. Traditional, there, there's mm -hmm. mom's song with her, with her, her bread fruit, her pineapple, beans, you know, whatever you want. And now you notice her smile? Yeah. They all had chewed the be betel nut. Betel nut. Which stains their teeth black. Uh -huh. What the, why they do it? Uh, it, it's a cocaine extract. Uh -huh. it, 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 it keeps you, it's like us drinking coffee. It's cheap, it's almost free, you just pick it off the bushes. You know. Here, here's some, we, we stop someplace to, to buy something, and you know, the little kids come out, and again, they're, they're, all, they're all trying their English out on you. I always liked this picture. It was not an uncommon sight, but this boy obviously was in charge of the herd, you know. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, he would take, he would lead the cattle back. But you know, he's got his little stick, and you know, he he was the cow, Vietnamese cowboy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> looking out the back of the helicopter, and you can see the horizon. So that's sitting inside it, looking out at the at the horizon as as we're turning. You know. And this is taken from a helicopter going over one of the villages here. And you can see the, the, the haze because it is so humid. Now, in this picture, we're, we're basically to where I ended up spending almost my first year as a base camp. In the background that on the horizon is a, is a mountain called Mad, uh, Monkey Mountain. And that's on the far side of the Bay of Da Nang. So on the near side, that hill on the left, the beach goes around in a big crescent shape all the way over to that, mm -hmm. that other mountain. So that, that's Monkey Mountain. The airport is almost straight dead center right to the coastline. And is that where the Air Force had their big base? Yes. Yep. Who, that. Is that, who is that fellow? His name was uh, Rick Baudry. And uh, he's a California boy. He, he grew up in Manhattan Beach. Uh, we spent about a year, year together. That's me. Um, <laughs> what uh, what is that rifle? That's, That's an M14. M14. Yeah, and one of my other buddies. We, we had just come back off, off some patrol. I forgot what it was. But you can see how nice and clean I am. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Crawling through the dirt and so forth. <laughs> and this, this, this is the trail. <laughs> on on this trail, and I think it was on this day, uh, that guy in front of me, he's from, he was from Kentucky. Uh, you can't really see much. And we're walking along and the guy up front goes, oh, hold it. And going through the, across the trail is an anaconda with a body about this big around. Uh -huh. We're just going by. We don't know where the head is so and we don't know where the tail on. is. So big, huh? It was like a log to step over. So we sat there and watched it go by and go by and go by. And finally the tail went, and as the tail went by, I'm thinking, I wonder where the head is. Did he circle back around? <laughs> About then we said, let's get out of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, here's rain. <laughs> so, when it would do that, and since it was fresh water, we'd all strip down and get grab a bar of soap and go stand under that. It was a fresh water shower. Sure. Oh yeah, it was great. Yeah. But here we are, someone's walking out just after the rainstorm. Oh, well, we're going to try and get now, see the, to see the thermometer there in the shade? Uh-huh. 125. Oh, come on. 125 see, in the shade. It is. That's <laughs> in the shade. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that was a typical day. So there, there we are. This is the duty you hated is on a hot day to... We'd dig the trench, and with the dirt you dug out of the trench, you'd fill the sandbag and, and stack it around your, your tent. Okay. Now here again in, in Da Nang, we never got hit once. So it seemed like a bloody waste of time to be doing, but uh, you know that, that's, that's what you were told to do, so you did it. So we, we had, I'll say, fighting holes and that kind of thing, but that was one of our sergeants. You see, he's got a shotgun instead of a, a M14. The 12, 12 gauge shotgun. That was my that was my living quarters there. That was my bunk. That you? Yep. That's where I, that, that was, was home. Just right a there. kid. I Maybe know. Too. Yeah. 
we called called him uh, Superman. Uh-huh. He, he had he was he was probably the most buffed out guy in our in our platoon. Is he, is he just that way? Or he yeah, at no, it? he worked at it. That, I took that, just holding the camera, and, and it's kind of a time exposure because I think I took that at night. Mm-hmm. I put the camera in my lap. And what you see on the overhead inside the tent, we found a parachute, an yeah. uh, orange parachute, and we hung that up inside of our tent. Yeah. Young guy, whole life ahead of you. Yeah, I know. Not, not knowing what the next year or so is going to bring. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> he was one of our technicians that uh, worked on our radios for us. So we had uh, basically like a little butler hut there for all the technician guys. That, that was the last building I ever saw during the whole whole thing. Everything else from that was tents. There's, <laughs> that's the same guy, Rick Baudry again. Uh-huh. <laughs> Mr. Enthusiasm. <laughs> Who's that guy? He was the guy from uh, this is Kentucky, I believe. This I'm trying to remember his up, name. Uh, close up of... Uh, with, uh, I'll, I'll remember his name somewhere. Does he know? Has he ever seen this? No. Here, here we're kind of getting a briefing on something. I forgot what it was. You can say some people aren't a whole lot interested in what's being said. <laughs> and then if you're really classy and had gone on R and R, you might have your own tape recorder. Look at that reel to reel there. Yeah. My goodness. I, I bought one of those later that's on, that's but I, I never kept it there. A handsome recorder. Yeah. Oh, you guys, you guys went, that's what you did in uh, Japan. You go yep. over there. Going on and on. That's where I got my Nikon when I first went. Yeah. Things like that. So, you know, that that's a first class little setup there. Sure is. You know, you got, you got your tunes, you got your M14 rifle right there, you got a little stool to sit on, you know. And then uh, <laughs> his name was Tex, and I can't remember his last name, but he was a pretty good guitarist. Here, here the Superman is jumping rope. They're, they're, they're twirling a rope. Uh-huh. And, and he was he was real good. He he could athletic wise he could almost do anything. And there's some breathing fire, just you know, anything to entertain ourselves with. That the guy doing that was one of our cooks. <laughs> good guy to know because if you get hungry late at night on guard duty, you sneak uh-huh. back there, he lets you make a sandwich or something, you know. It might be spam and dry bread, but it was better than no food, you know. And at that age you're always hungry, right? Yeah, that's right. There's, there's Superman. Well, he's sure put on his show. Oh, yeah. Okay, now, so here's the two Caps brothers. One with the back to you is Denny, and the guy doing the curls with it. That's a big bolt. That's a huge bridge bolt. It's about two inches in diameter. It's a big, mm-hmm. it's a steel bolt, and he's doing So those are the two identical twins. Ronnie is doing the curls with him, Den- Denny's sitting there. So that's, that's the cap. There they are. Uh-huh. Are they they're identical or what? Yeah, my goodness. Yeah, they're both not with us anymore. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Died homeless. Homeless? Homeless, up, up in Richmond. Richmond, California. I think both of them had a heavy exposure to Agent Orange. They both ended up with cancer and basically died, died uh, without a penny. No. Yeah. Good guys, a big heart. Uh, they would do anything you ask, and they're, they're just stronger than oxes. Two tough guys, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And very rare to have twin brothers in the same outfit together. Yeah, I know. That but they, that's, that's they refused to join unless they got a, got a, a written contract from the Marine Corps that says they would never be separated. Mm-hmm. And so they got a waiver.